This is Dr. Segill with a tutorial on probiotics. These kinds of supplements are located in your health food store, usually in the refrigerated section, either liquid or capsule or sometimes chewable tablet for kids. Probiotics are necessary because they have a certain amount of bacteria. You need good bacteria to be existing in your digestive tract to have a well-functioning digestive system. Usually you'll get your first exposure to a probiotic or a normal flora bacteria as you're born. And if you lead a healthy life and you eat properly, you'll maintain that uh, normal flora until you're old and gray. The unfortunate problem is some of us go through infections, whether they're upper respiratory tract infections, skin infections, urinary tract, or even using an antibiotic before a dental procedure or a surgical procedure. Some of us will have to do antibiotics and at that point in time the antibiotic does its magic. It kills the infection, the, the bad bacteria that causes the infection and it allows the body to heal a little better, faster. But unfortunately antibiotics also destroy the good bacteria in your gut and that can set you up for some problems later on. So if you're going to be given a prescription for an antibiotic, especially in my office, well, we'll try to avoid it, but if we have to give an antibiotic, guaranteed that I'm going to suggest taking a probiotic at the same time. Now, that's just at the same starting time. I usually say, luckily, most of my patients do have insurance, and insurance covers the newer antibiotics that are twice a day or once a day. So that at the most, if it's twice a day in the beginning and the end of the day, then at least you have a probiotic that you can take in the middle of the day so it doesn't interfere with the absorption of your antibiotic. Uh, so, if you are going to take an antibiotic, make sure it's got the specific four bacteria that have been studied that help in antibiotic-associated diarrhea. The four you're going to look for on the label of your probiotic will be Lactobacilli GG, Lactobacilli ruteri, Lactobacilli sporogenes, and then Saccharomyces boulardii. Those four are important. Those are the ones that have been studied that decrease the occasional diarrhea after antibiotics. Now, if the probiotic that you normally take or the one that you have in your, uh, on the shelves at your store have those in addition to several others, that's okay. If they only have one of the ones I just mentioned here on your left, uh, maybe look for a different one. Or ask your herbalist if they have anything with the four. And I like it refrigerated. Uh, the other things, or the other uh, consideration is if you're not taking antibiotics and you just have a diarrhea problem, loose bowel movements, uh, irritable bowel syndrome with a diarrhea dominant characteristic, and I also suggest my patients who have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease to consider taking in, uh, probiotics as well. Well, the probiotics that have been studied to decrease uh, just standard diarrhea in the lives of my patients uh, the, the four that we look for on, on uh, the labels will be number one, Lactobacilli ruteri, Lactobacilli rhamnosus, Bifidobacter, and then Saccharomyces boulardii. Uh, some of them sound familiar. The Saccharomyces boulardii actually is not a bacteria, it's a yeast. But again, there's strong evidence for the use of the, these four for diarrhea. There's strong evidence for the use of these four as far as antibiotic associated diarrhea in the research that's out there. So if uh, as with any suggestions that I have to make medically, it always has to be backed up with research. So uh, the other thing to consider is children, uh, unfortunately they probably get a lot of antibiotics when they're younger, probably don't need it, but they unfortunately get them. And uh, anti or, or probiotics for children are kind of limited. Still I would try to get either a chewable or liquid with the four uh, as we talked about, if you can. If you can't, you might want to go online and search, but uh, yogurt doesn't do the same thing. Yogurt uh, certainly tastes great and it has dairy product in it. Yo most yogurts that are pasteurized uh, contain about 70,000 to 80,000 bacteria. And that's a good amount versus your two, or your probiotics that you'll find on the shelf, which usually have about 4 billion per dose. There actually is a really cool prescription probiotic that has been studied with ulcerative colitis called VSL number 3 and it has 300 billion. Imagine 300 billion bacteria. 
Now that the amount of bacteria is great. It might be covered by your insurance if you have good insurance. But sometimes that amount of bacteria can cause a problem with your gut because there's so many. But just think of it this way. The more good bacteria you have in a confined space, the less food there's going to be for the bad bacteria that are also there. So if you keep on forcing every single day good bacteria down into your digestive tract and there's a certain amount of bad bacteria that are left over from an antibiotic issue, usually the good guys will outrun the bad guys as far as food sources and living space. So just by default they'll win and you'll change around your floor within 30 days. If you're just using it for uh, antibiotic uh, associated diarrhea, at, uh, I usually suggest just 30 days and then save your money and do a different, uh, again, maintain with your usual omega-3 fish oil, uh, vitamin D3 and a multivitamin in addition to a good fiber source. The one thing with probiotic use is that if you have a poor diet, there's nothing that's going to help the bacteria adhere or maintain their population in the gut the things that help them maintain are called prebiotics and that'll probably be a different tutorial but just remember a good a good diet will usually manifest and maintain your normal flora after your probiotic is finished